Well, I appreciate him acknowledging his ignorance so flagrantly because that's exactly what it is. Um, that's number one. Number two, um, I remember a writer, I think it was based out of Chicago, if I remember correctly, his name was like Dave Zirin, Z-I-R-I-N, who once wrote about Dicker, reminding everybody last year that this was the same Dicker, Ditka that went up against uh, Bears players who refused to cross the picket line. This is the same Mike Ditker, uh, that uh, former player Dave Durson, who committed suicide and was uh, and was posthumously diagnosed with CTE, being quoted as saying Dave, Mike Ditka never gave a damn about the players at all, their injuries or anything like that. This is the same Mike Ditka that that writer uh, compared in terms of how Mike Ditka speaks to speaking in class. Classic KKK fashion, where he's basically talking about, uh, you know, uh, guy, basically essentially saying that guys should lead the country, you know, essentially go back to Africa or whatever. And I remember a congressman once said that to civil rights icon Paul Robeson, and I got the quote right here because this was Paul Robeson's response. Because my father was a slave and my people died to build this country, and I am, go I am going to stay here and have a part in it just like you, and no fascist-minded people will drive me from it. That was from Paul Robeson. What we have is a situation, and guys like Mike Ditker, uh, elder individual, uh, accomplished as a football iconic figure, no doubt a Hall of Famer, somebody whose hand I shook on many, many occasions. I know he's knowledgeable about the game of football and what have you, and I'm not trying to attack him as an individual, but I am attacking what he said and how it comes across as being somebody who's flagrantly insensitive to the plight of folks in the United States of America. To sit up here and to have a history that spans centuries, that is well documented and undeniable, even amongst the racist in this country. To sit up there and say, there's no oppression that you see, that you've witnessed, that you understand or comprehend, is the height of ignorance. And it's unfortunate that Mike Ditker would find himself attached to words like that because it shows a flagrant level and an alarming level of insensitivity. It's unbecoming of anybody in today's society as far as I'm concerned. And it's really unfortunate that Mike Ditker would find himself associated with these words. But the most unfortunate part about all of this is that listening to Mike Ditka speak throughout the years on issues uh, of this magnitude I'd love to tell you that I'm surprised, but nobody is surprised because it's nothing new coming out of the mic of my of my out of the mouth of Mike Ditka. That much we can say. He can be credited with consistency. A hundred years? They haven't been oppressed in a hundred years. What can you even say about that? Well, let me say this. There are segments of this population who seem to me to be determined to be as aggrieved as the aggrieved. So for example, and Will, you brought this up before, there are many people who are deeply offended by not participating in a flag ceremony. Um, as though, hey, we want in on this uh, uh, culture of grievance. As though that offense could somehow nearly, or, or that's a response to the righteous indignation expressed by people who are descendant from slaves in this country going through not just slavery, but then Reconstruction and, and, and Jim Crow and the ongoing effects of institutional um, oppression. I mean, look at per capita income, education, et cetera. Is there anyone there claiming that it's because black people are somehow intrinsically worse at learning or earning money? No, it's, a, it's, it's our country's legacy. When my, so that's one group of people I think are misguided. Mike Ditka's in another group now. Uh, I, you would hope in a group by himself, but unfortunately, recent events have shown that far too many share this kind of point of view. He said, at least he did say, as Stephen A said, at least that I, I know of, I don't know of, ways in which black people have been oppressed in this country in the last 100 years. 1960 was um, 1964 is the Civil Rights Act, and, and that wasn't 100 years ago. Uh, and Mike Dicker was 21 years old in 1960. And the reason the Civil Rights Act exists is because there was unequal employment opportunity. There's, there was, and it remains, unequal educational opportunity. I mean, that's a fact. Integration, what, 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 are, what are we, did he miss the 1960s? Did he, what do you think the civil rights movement was about. It was th there to address the out in the open inequality 
Black people can't stay at the same hotel, eat at the same restaurant, drink from the same water fountain, or being hosed by police. Wallace in the door of the schoolway making sure it's not integrated. Medgar Evers, what, what are, has, did Mike Dick asleep, has he been asleep for decades? There is no way any conscious being could have missed that. And yet, apparently he has. Now, if his larger point, if Ditka's larger point is that in spite of institutional uh, disadvantages, this country relative to the rest of the world allows the individual by dint of their own effort to rise, okay, I believe that's true in spite of institutional racism. But it is in spite of that oppression it's not that the oppression doesn't exist. And I think what Mike Ditka should do now is think carefully about what he said, think carefully about the events that have transpired in the most public way possible in his own lifetime, and probably apologize for the remark.